summer day is over It's busy girls have alone I will sing beneath the starlight With a weeny heart of love then he rises like a vision Sparkling bright it shines for me My own dear Ellen Manning With its green hills by Street, now no longer there, we moved elsewhere, and this tall, quite handsome guy came in the shop and asked for me, and I had not seen him ever before, and he came to me and he said, you're Jim Kane. I had to admit I was. They then introduced themselves, so my name's Gibby, Huey Gibb, Gibby. I said, what can I do for you, Mr. Gibb? He said, uh, I've got the contract this year to provide music in the uh, Hotel Alexandra and the Douglas Bay Hotel up in Douglas Head for the Ranieri family. I said, oh yes, I know the Ranieris. I said, as a matter of fact, uh, I think they, uh, they're they friends of my father-in-law's, which they were. As it happened, the next year they gave us a very nice pair of blankets, the uh, Ranieris, for a wedding present. That's another hint of there. But anyway, Huey Gibbs said to me, are you interested in playing the season with me? I said, what have you got? He said, well, we'll have a quartet, maybe a quintet. And you'll find a picture of this, incidentally, in uh, the Bee Gees volume, Bernie, if you care to have a look. So I joined Hugh Gibbs' band for the summer seasons, and I was there until I played five consecutive years, I think, until I left. But I still remain very friendly with Hugh. And then the Gibb family left the Isle of Man. And uh, when they came back years later, it was... Uh, Huey made a beeline for me and we got to be old friends again and took him to the jazz concerts and uh, my elder son Christopher, who was a very fine musician in his own right, became friendly again with Andy, who he had met when the, in the 1960s and uh, they used to play a lot together and uh, Andy, as a matter of fact, wanted Chris to go on keyboards with him to Australia but Chris had other ideas. The Douglas Bay Hotel has now given way to a major office development reflecting the changing fortunes of the Isle of Man from tourism to finance. But just across the bay was the main venue for the Hugh Gibb Band in the 40s and early 50s, the Hotel Alexandra. But that too has now been replaced by a block of luxury apartments, Millennium Court. Let's go back now to the very beginning to where the Bee Gees were born, the Jane Crickall Maternity Home. Oh uh, yes, but Leslie was 17 months yeah. when um, uh, Barry was born, and Barry was born in the Crook Hall. Yeah. And then the, the twins, three years after, the twins were born in the Jane Crook Hall. Now, when you first arrived in the Isle of Man, do you recall where it was that you first lived? Yes, I do. It was right at the end of the... <laughs> I can't remember the name of it, but it was a, off the Peel Road. It was a little hill went up behind Duke's Garage and yes, up yeah. the hill. And right at the bottom of the hill was a little house. And we held, we uh, went to live there. We rented with the people who owned it, a Mr. and Mrs. Hollows. 
Well, sadly, as you've just seen, all that's left of the house on Peel Road is well, quite a lovely leafy glade. And then you moved down to Strand Street, I believe. Then we moved down to Strand Street, yes, over Maley's Chemist, yeah. yes. And from there it was St Catherine's Drive? There it was Catherine's Drive. Well, believe it or not, Barbara, your next-door neighbour in 1949 in St Catherine's Drive, Arnie Barrow, remembers you very well and very fondly the day that you returned home with the twins. I remember 1949, when the twins came home, and when they came home, the mother and the twins came, and I was very pleased to see them at home, and also the sister and all, they were all very nice family. And I always will never forget them when they were young, and they were hard-skinned little boys. <laughs> And I always loved them. And may I say this, I missed them all next door. And they've been very good to me and uh, my sister and the whole lot of us. Thank you. We can't say the same about their next move, which was to Smedley Cottage in Spring Valley. I bumped into a neighbor of the Gibb family who lived next door to them at Smedley Cottage. She was then Barbara Bell, just a couple of years older than Barry. I took Barbara back to the area where Smedley Cottage used to be. And for Barbara, it was her first visit since childhood. It was a very emotional visit. I can't do it, baby. Just look. I can't do this. I can't. Look at this. It makes you want to cry. This is where we used to live. This was my old house. Um, that was Lord's ice cream. Where that lorry is, was where the Bee Gees lived. Over this hedge is the river. And that's where Morris almost drowned the day we were all trying to get over into the field to watch a football match. This was Lord's ice cream, where they made ice cream. That at the back here they had a loading bay where they used to load the lorries up and this is where Barry first done his first performance singing Home on the Range. His mum searched everywhere for him that night and here he was down here doing his own little show all by himself. And from Spring Valley we went to Chapel House on the Strang Road, and then from there we moved about a lot. Yeah. Then uh, we moved to uh, Williston. Yeah. Then we got the house in Williston. So, do you remember playing around Williston at all? Oh yes. Yeah. 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 Lots of times there was a, a gang of us, and um, many a great bonfire night on Snaefell Road. Yes. Yeah. Well, not many because we were only very young. But did you actually start school in the island, or did you um, <laughs> not start until you went to Manchester? Um, no, I didn't start. I we I don't remember me starting until we went to Manchester. When we started in Wally Range, yeah. so um, that was nursery school then. So we must have just, as we first arrived in Manchester, I started school, which was about five or six. Yeah. Well, this is where living in Spring Valley, Barry and Sister Leslie were brought the mile and a half to Braddon Primary School. The family's move to Strand Street meant they had to attend Tinwell Street School now known as Fairfield. And then Barry went to Domain Road Boys, which, as you can see, is right next door to the Jane Crickor Maternity Home. Now, isn't this just where they came in? Yeah, what was his name when the guy used to run that? Ranieri. No. Originally, that's when your father was working. No, for no, him. this is much later. This Yorkshire guy. Hi, the name's Jeff Bruce Morris. You remember Douglas Bay, the 70s? Can you remember anything of the 70s? Do you remember taking the restaurant over for four days with Barry and the band, and you said you wouldn't make a mess, and you were there five days? Jive talking I heard eight million times because my flat was above the restaurant. We had some good times, we drank a lot of beer. And remember your mum, I always promised her that I'd take her to Hope Street Chip Shop for a supper. If she ever comes back to the Isle of Man, 
Oak Street chip shop's gone, but I'll still take her for a supper. When we came back from Spain, we went back to the Isle of Man and bought the house on um, was it Alexander, Alexander yes. Drive, yeah. yes. So is that when you actually were running the post office? That's when we had the post office. We bought the, ha the post office, yes. Well, you can imagine how proud Barbara must have felt when we managed to have the post office issue a set of Bee Gees commemorative stamps. Uh, Hugh and Barbara took over running the post office in Union Mills at round about that time, but uh, the house up in Alexandra Drive, which was beautifully laid out, was still a bit of a drop-in point for local musicians with a fabulous organ, I remember. Lots of press a button and all kinds of things happened, so it was quite an experience. Well, um, I first came to know the Gibb family. I'm Chris, by the way, Jim's son. We used to go along when uh, Huey had moved back to the island much later in the 70s and we'd go after church on Sunday morning round to the Gibbs house in Alexander Drive which was quite a treasure trove to uh, any youngster because he had a wealth of electronic gadgetry that we'd never seen before. In fact, Huey had the first video camera that I'd ever seen. Nothing compared with the device that this is being filmed on. It would take nearly half a room, a very large reel-to-reel -reel with separate sound and separate audio. Well. Andy was living with them as well at that time and uh, I actually got to, to play with Andy and work on some songs with him. There was some talk of maybe going away with him actually to Australia to play in a group. Didn't come to light. Andy has seemed very much to be uh, live the pop lifestyle. He had his own motorbike, his own car. Didn't have a driving licence and wasn't 16 but we'll uh, say nothing more about that. I've uh, got to ask, what's with these boomerangs? Oh, the boomerangs, Bernie. Funnily enough, when the Bee Gees returned to Alan Vallin, they uh, brought some presents with them, and these two fairly lethal looking devices were gifts to my brother and I, and uh, as you can tell by the slight repair work, we did uh, take them out and have a go with them, until we were asked to stop using them in Nobles Park for fear of taking some of the trees down, I think. <laughs> what drew me back to the Isle of Man? Well, obviously, um, we were all born in the Isle of Man, which, which helps us obviously enormously if we live there tax-wise. So. The Labour government in England had raised the taxes to something like 73%, in the pound, <laughs> which was uh, terrifying to anybody who's actually making good money. So it was the end of the 60s, it was the end of people like us, and, um, but we went to the Isle of Man for about two years. I stayed in a little semi-detached at the top of Bray Hill, and then uh, yeah. a little white house at the top of Princess Road, yeah. which I fell in love with. Well, the estate agent that you yeah. uh, bought it from now lives in that now house. Listen, don't blame him. <laughs> no. Don't blame him, because I, I never wanted to sell it. Yeah. Um, but the idea that, you, you know, when you're leaving the Isle of Man to go and live somewhere else, you have to sell um, the home that you have there um, to prove that you're actually leaving, you know. And uh, so I had to sell it. I didn't want to. Well, my early memories of the island um, were the bikes. I remember loud noises with TT bikes. Uh, my dad drove around the TT course and I was on the, on the front of the tank of the bike. It was bright green and I would hang onto this tank and my dad used to fly around that, the track. Didn't you uh, yeah, did. marshal at uh, yeah. Bingo Bar? I don't know, I guess it's like doing bingo at the local hall, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> You've got a bit of a name. Go yes. down there and put this marshal down. <laughs> yeah. This band around your arm and I did. And yeah. I loved it. I thought it was good fun. But uh, most of the times it was just Liverpool Arms as my home. But you know, living on the island in those days for me, because I drank a lot in those days, so living on the island was, uh, during that period, was a very low period for us, and we really had to get out, and labour was in, it was a terrible time in England. But I drank all yes. afternoon, I'd go back home, get my cans of Guinness out of the fridge, sit there, put my Magnavox video machine on and watch Hawaii Five O's or something. <laughs> Childhood days once more.